Uh, hello everyone. Uh, in uh, this part number four of my mini course, I'm going to talk about um, how we will restrict spin C structures uh, on a manifold uh, Z to its hypersurface, oriented hypersurface. Um, so I'm going to recall a bit what we did last time. So last time we have established the schrodinger lichtenauer formula, which laid the square of the Dirac operator to the Laplacian. So d squared was the Laplacian plus a geometric quantity, depending on the manifold, one over four, the scalar curvature, plus the curvature term of the auxiliary line bundle uh, defining uh, the spin C structure. So today what I'm going to do, uh, so our goal is the following. So what is our goal? So I have uh, a manifold M. Uh, it's a hypersurface. So it's an isometric immersion of M into Z, N plus one. So I'm going to denote um, the metric on Z and M by the same symbol, uh, uh, G. So I'm going to start with uh, my first proposition for today. So proposition. So again, I have an isometric immersion of a manifold M into another manifold of dimension N plus one. Isometric immersion, of course. I'm going to assume that my ambient manifold is spin C and uh, the hypersurface of course is oriented then the result is uh, the following the manifold M is also uh, spin C so how I'm going to prove that my manifold is spin C my manifold M is spin C First of all, since my manifold Z is a spin C, I have a Dirac bundle on Z with rank two, the integer part of N plus one over two. And with a, with a suitable connection, the good Clifford multiplication, and the Hermitian metric, etc. And we need to define the, all these ingredients now on my hypersurfaces uh, M. So let's start the proof. First of all, I'm going to denote by, uh, as usual, the second fundamental form. Uh, this is the second fundamental form of of my immersion, and I'm going to denote it by new the normal vector of. Uh, the immersion, of course, and uh, just to recall what is the second fundamental form, so this is, uh, it acts on the, the tangent vector of my manifold M, and it's a symmetric tensor from Tm to Tm, and for any x, the second fundamental form is given by <coughs> minus the covariant derivative of the levi vita connection of Z, uh, new in the direction of x. This is my this is uh, my second fundamental form. So I'm going to denote from now on all uh, the ingredients of the, my manifold Z by uh, I'm going to denote the symbol Z uh, like here, that's like like as I did here for the levi pitta connection. But for my manifold M, uh, we will see how I'm going to uh, denote it. So by the connection here. I mean the levi civita connection on my ambient manifold that this is second fundamental form you can prove that it's symmetric and etc so i know that now that my manifold z is spin c so how we can can we define a spin c structure on my hypersurfaces M. First of all, as you can see, since Z is spin C, uh, um, I already have the good, the spin, the spinner bundle that I'm going to write by sigma that, that again, this is a complex vector bundle of rank two, the integer part of N plus one over two. 
And here, just I'm going to do the proof only for the, uh, the, for the even case. So I'm going to assume that uh, n is even or n plus 1 is odd. So um, I'm going to take the case n even. So n is 2m. So in a similar case, in a similar way, you do the case n odd. I'm going to explain it at the end and your manifold is of dimension 2n plus 1. So what I'm going to do first of all, I'm going to consider the complex, the, the, the complex the spin or bundle sigma of z, and I'm going to restrict it to m. And I'm going to denote this, uh, this new complex vector bundle as sigma of m. Um, so what I did here, I took the spin c structure or the spin or bundle on z, and I just restricted to M. Uh, is it a good candidate to be uh, a Dirac bundle with rank uh, to the integer part of 2M over 2? So um, let's see. So what is the rank of uh, sigma of M? So the rank sigma M is of rank uh, to, it's like sigma of Z because uh, sigma M is a restriction of sigma of Z. So no, it's 2n plus 1 over 2, but I'm treating here the case where n is even, so it's the same as writing 2 the integer part of n over 2, and of course because n is even, you can write it at n over 2. So uh, this is a good uh, rank, because I need uh, my sigma m to have the rank 2 the integer part of n over 2. So what I did here by restricting sigma z, is to get a new complex vector bundle of a good rank. So it could be um, my spinorial or my complex vector bundle or my spinorial bundle on my hypersurface M. So now I need to define uh, all the other ingredients like uh, the Hermitian metric on my hypersurface M, what will be the Clifford multiplication, and what will be the, uh, the spinorial connection on my uh, sigma of M in order to get a spin C structure on my hypersurface. So, and for the complex vector bundle, or the spinor bundle, it's easy. What I did, I restricted sigma Z to M, and because N is even, I got at the good rank of my of the restriction of sigma of z. Of course, you can ask the question: What's going to happen if n is odd? But don't worry, when n is odd, so n plus one is even. So the rank of um, so uh, my sorry my my angit manifold is of even dimen uh, is of odd uh, dimension, and when uh, and in this case. Sorry, it will be of even dimension, and I will explain later on when you have the even dimension, sigma z will be split into two parts, sigma z plus and sigma z minus, the, the positive spinners and the negative spinners, and then I'm going to restrict the positive part of the spinner or the negative part of spinners or the positive spinners and the negative spinners, and, and I'm going again to get the complex, the good uh, rank on sigma of n. But let's focus now on the case n is even. So I got the good rank, and now maybe you are thinking of restricting also the this, this spinorial levy chivita connection, blah, blah, blah. However, if we restrict uh, the levy chivita. spin C connection nabla z to m we do not get or we do not obtain a suitable connection why? because Since that is spin C, uh, condition 2 of um, the Clifford multiplication gamma uh, will be, so if you remember condition 2, the connection on Z, gamma Y of phi is gamma nabla X Y Z of phi plus gamma Y nabla Z x of phi. So of course here, um, by the gamma here, 
I mean the Clifford multiplication on Z, but I'm not going to denote it by gamma Z, gamma Z, gamma Z, just to make the notation uh, very simple to see or uh, to write. So I'm not going to write gamma of Z. However, for when I'm going to define the Clifford multiplication on M, I'm going to denote it by gamma N. So gamma here denote the Clifford multiplication on my M with manifold. So allow me to remove uh, the notation Z. Great, but as you can see, uh, this is not a uh, good connection, uh, or I cannot just restrict the spinoidal spin C connection to my hypersurface M because of the following. As you can see here, due to condition number two, I'm, I'm getting the Riemannian or the Levi Civita connection on Z and not the one on M. So we do not have a suitable connection so because I need condition 2 to be satisfied by my newly defined connection on my hypersurface M but due to this connection here on Z this condition and we, unfortunately we don't have the connection on M here that's why this is not a suitable connection if we just restrict so let's see what we are going to uh, do. So I'm going to first to define that the Clifford multiplication on my hypersurface before defining the good spinorial of Civita connection. So we want to define I'm going to write by gamma M. Again, it should be on my hypersurface M. So how we define normally uh, gamma M, we, do, we, we want to define gamma M such that for every point X in M, gamma M from the Clifford, from the fiber of the Clifford bundle here should define, if you remember the definition, should define a reducible representation of the Clifford algebra, so such that gamma M defines an reducible representation of CLTXM, which is of course the complex Clifford algebra of dimension or of rank N. So, uh, but we know, so how I'm going to define it, we know already what is gamma, we know that for every point X in M, already gamma, which is a Clifford multiplication on my ambient manifold, is, uh, an, uh, is an irreducible representation of CL 2M plus 1 and not 2M. Uh, so gamma is an irreducible representation. This is a Clifford multiplication on Z. So of course, that is of dimension N plus 1, but here N is 2M. So this, is a, this, this represents or define an irreducible representation of CL 2M plus 1. And if you remember when in the first day when we, when we did some uh, algebraic or when we proved some algebraic fact, we have proved that gamma 2M plus 1 of the even part of CL 2M plus 1 is the endomorphism. So I'm going to write it in my next slide. is equal to the endomorphism of C to the integer part of N over 2. But don't forget here that N, the integer part of N over 2 is the same as the integer part of N plus 1 over 2 because I took the case where uh, N is even. Then, maybe you agree now, if you remember, we wrote CL to M plus 1, the even part, that's what gamma 2m plus 1, if we restrict it. So you get the endomorphism, again, of C to integer part of n plus 1 over 2. And if you remember, we have seen also that CL2m, the even part of CL2m plus 1, 0, is isomorphic to or isometric to CL2m, the Clifford algebra of dimension 2m. 
And if you, uh, I'm going to recall uh, this isometric or this isomorphism, it was for every EJ, if you remember, because 2M is even here, so uh, it gives you EJ uh, cleave for the mu, uh, the unit normal vector of the immersion and of course if you apply gamma to m plus one you are going to get gamma to m plus one of ej gamma to m plus one of mu so it seems that the following will define a reducible representation but now of my clifford algebra cl to M. So if this will define an irreducible representation of uh, CL to M, then I will take it as uh, the Clifford, I'm going to denote it by the this composition, I'm going to denote it by gamma of M, and this will be the Clifford multiplication on my uh, hybrid surface. Of course, I need to check that conditions 1, 2, and 3 for gamma M are satisfied. So again, we are going to consider gamma I'm going to define gamma m of x to be, as I got in my previous slide, for every ej, gamma 2m ej and mu. So I'm going to define gamma m of x to be gamma of x, gamma mu. So I'm going to come back to my previous slide. This gamma here is the Clifford multiplication. On, uh, uh, on my ambient uh, manifold, and now I defined a new uh, Clifford multiplication on my hypersurface M to be gamma X, gamma mu, where mu is the normal vector of the immersion. Again, why? Because this map here represents a um, an irreducible representation of CL2M, and that's what we need to define gamma or a new C infinity linear map that should satisfy condition 1, 2, and 3. Uh, of course, it's an easy exercise to check that gamma M defined uh, as, uh, as follow uh, satisfies condition 1, 2, and condition uh, 3. Um, Sorry, condition 1 and condition uh, 3, not 2 yet, because 2 is 3. Um, in condition 2, uh, we need to define a suitable connection, and we didn't define yet a good connection, spinorial connection. But as we, as we already know, condition 1 and 3, there is no connection. So for the moment, it's very easy to check that my connection, gamma, or my Clifford, or this map, gamma M, defined as follow, satisfy condition 1 and 3. I still have to check condition 2, of course, but as I said, to, to, uh, to check condition 2, uh, I should um, define first a suitable connection that will satisfy uh, my condition 2. And we have seen that if we just restrict the spinorial connection, we are not going to get a suitable one. So how are we going to get the good connection on my hypersurface? On my hypersurface? And so let's see. So uh, I'm going to denote, so uh, by the suitable connection that I would like to find, uh, Nabla M M. So if Nabla M is a suitable connection, on M, then we should have, this is what we proved last time. So locally, I know that it should be of the following form, Nabla X M phi for any spinner field on or for any section of sigma of m should be 1 over 4 sigma j from 1 to m gamma m ej gamma m nabla x m ej phi and we don't forget the curvature term that it comes from um, the auxiliary line bundle alpha so what is alpha? So I'm going to denote alpha to the power m, or alpha not really to the power m, I mean alpha m, which is mean that the curvature of the auxiliary line bundle defining the spin C that we should define the spin C structures on my hypersurface m. And so again, what is uh, phi here? So phi again 
is Psi restricted to M, which is a section of the sigma M. And again, what is I alpha M? This is a local expression of the connection on the auxiliary line bundle LM and maybe you are asking now what is LM the, the auxiliary line bundle uh, knowing the, uh, of, of the spin C structures on M knowing that we already know uh, uh, the auxiliary line bundle defining the spin C structure on that so I'm going to uh, explain it immediately so first of all um, LM uh, by definition it should be if you remember that of sigma of M to the following power we have proved of we have proved that uh, uh, such power should uh, should exist so but anyway I'm going to write it n over 2 but because sigma of M by definition is sigma Z restricted to M sigma Z restricted to M to the power 2 1 minus n over 2 but because uh, n is even I can write it that of sigma m uh, sigma z sorry 2 1 minus n plus 1 over 2 and then I restrict it to m but this quantity here by definition or this auxiliary line bundle is uh, the auxiliary or this vector bundle is the auxiliary line bundle of the spin C structure on Z restricted to M. So in fact, what is um, the auxiliary or I cannot say it yet, the auxiliary line bundle on the hypersurface because I didn't define the spin C structure, but I can take the line bundle on my F sigma of M will be the complex or the spinner bundle. Uh, L of M should be the restriction uh, of the ambient auxiliary line bundle to my manifold M. And thus, this will give that if you just imagine uh, the connection one form uh, on Z, if you apply it to X for every X and gamma of TM, it's just I alpha of M the point X because because the auxiliary line bundle on M is just the one of that restricted to M. So that's uh, for the auxiliary uh, line bundle that will be my good the good candidate to define uh, the spin C structure on my hypersurface. Um, now I'm able to the to um, to deal with the suitable connection. So I should have normally again the following. 1 over 4, sigma, gamma m e j, gamma m, nabla m x e j, plus i over 2, alpha m of x. So I'm writing it again. Now, however, I'm going to use the Gauss formula that relate the connection nabla m the Levi-Civita nabla M of my hypersurface to my ambient, to the Levi-Civita of my ambient manifold. And um, uh, I believe that all, and which is, um, I'm going to recall it here, that nabla X, Z of Y is nabla M X, Y plus the second fundamental form applied X, Y, the vector mu. Okay, so that's how, this is the levi civita conne uh, the, the Gauss formula relating the levi civita connection, nabla M and nabla Z. So I'm going to replace it here uh, to see what will be the good candidate or the good suitable and the suitable connection nabla of M. So equal to 1 over 4 sigma, uh, gamma M, gamma M, Let's come back. So I know that gamma M is gamma EJ gamma mu and gamma M nabla is gamma M gamma mu. But uh, so you have gamma mu twice and gamma mu squared will be minus one. So I'm going to get in total 
1 over 4 gamma ej gamma nabla xz of ej restricted to m don't forget I have the second because of the Gauss formula I have the second fundamental form x ej gamma ej gamma mu psi restricted to m and of course the i over 2 alpha m but alpha m and alpha z <coughs> apply to the vector x it is the same because the auxiliary line bundle on my m is just a restriction of the one on z by psi restricted to m so let's proceed it's equal but of course uh, this one here this quantity here added to the quantity here it's just by definition the local expression of the ambient spinoni levi civita connection so, so this is just nabla z x psi then you restrict it to m and you still have uh, uh, the clifford uh, the expression with the second fundamental form but before we write it so as, as i said the quantity here is from j from 1 to n and so if you want to get the ambient manifold the connection on the ambient manifold it should be j from 1 to n plus 1 but we know uh, that at the rank n plus 1 um, the ej is a mu so to write this red quantity here as nabla z of psi i should omit or i should add minus 1 over 4 gamma mu of the normal vector gamma nabla z x mu of psi restricted to m then i should still have the minus one over four gamma the second fundamental form applied to x gamma mu psi and then restricted to m great and um, this is equal to nabla x z of psi restricted to m but i know that nabla um, nabla x mu is the second fundamental form up to sine so i can write it as plus one over four gamma mu gamma the second fundamental form of psi restricted to m minus one over four the second fundamental form gamma gamma mu psi restricted to m but you know that the second fundamental form applied to x and mu are orthogonal and we know that from the condition number three that the uh, gamma gamma second fundamental form gamma mu is minus gamma mu gamma the second fundamental form so i can write it as nabla x z psi restricted to m minus half gamma second fundamental form applied to x gamma mu psi restricted to m but this quantity here this quantity here by definition is gamma n the definition of the Clifford multiplication on m so in total i'm going to get nabla z x psi restricted to m minus half the Clifford multiplication that we define gamma m phi great so uh, if you need, um, this is what we could, so at the end, finally, if I want to write it again, nabla xm phi is nabla x psi restricted to m minus half gamma m second fundamental form applied to m. That's what we call the spin C gauss formula of course it's called gauss formula because it comes or it's derived from uh, the gauss formula relating the levi civita connection nabla m and nabla and that so if we take nabla m to be defined as follows which is nabla z psi restricted to m minus half gamma m that we already defined of the second fundamental form then we are sure to get this is a suitable connection that satisfies condition number two so choosing m nabla m to be nabla xm nabla xz psi restricted to m minus gamma m 
pi of x phi for every phi given by so phi is the restriction of psi to m and the psi is an ambient spinner field this will define a good connection and for every x in gm of course so if we choosing nabla m to be the following we get a suitable connection so what what i mean by a suitable connection i mean it satisfies so satisfying condition two. so now i can say again if i have a spicy structures on my ambient manifold Z, I can define a spin C structure on my hypersurface. So I'm going to give a small recap. So let's take M, um, a hypersurface of Z, and let's assume that N is even. So I have Z spin C. How I can define the spin C structures on M? So you just take sigma M to be sigma Z restricted to M. Take. You just choose gamma M applied to any X tangent to M to be gamma X, gamma mu, where gamma is a Clifford multiplication on Z, gamma M the Clifford multiplication on M, and the mu is a normal vector with the immersion. And of course, gamma M, and now, you choose uh, the good connection to be nabla m nabla x z psi restricted to m minus half gamma m the second fundamental form applied to x phi then you define a suitable connection what do i mean by suitable connection so it's uh, condition one two and three are satisfied for gamma m and nabla m so this gives or this will define a good spin C structures on uh, my hypersurface M. So in my next result, I'm going to relate the Dirac operator between the ambient manifold and the hypersurface M. But before we proceed, I'm just quickly uh, give you how we, if, it is, if N is not even, how we are going to restrict uh the um uh, the ambient spinner bundle how i'm going to get the good rank to get an irreducible representation of uh the, the complex clifford algebra so now i'm going to give a, a remark before we proceed in a similar way if you have an isometric immersion of m and then z n plus one but now I'm going to assume that n is odd. So n plus 1 is even. And in the even case, to get the good spinner bundle, I mean with the good rank, um, I know that sigma z can be split into sigma z plus sigma z minus. Let me write it well. where sigma plus z, uh, plus z, this is true because n plus 1 is even, so where the positive part of the spinner bundle on z is a set of all spinner fields where gamma z, oh, sorry, where gamma of the complex volume the, the complex of so the Clifford multiplication of the volume element of the volume element on psi is plus psi so the, the complex volume element uh, acts as identity on the spinner psi of course and sigma minus that and when the Clifford multiplication of the complex volume element acts act as the minus identity on uh, Psi, and of course now uh, to get the spin C structures on M, I cannot restrict the whole uh, spinner bundle on Z, so what I'm going to do, the sigma M will be the positive part of the complex 
of the spinner bundle on that and you restrict it to M. I'm going to define gamma M as I did previously when in the case N is even, gamma X, gamma mu, and of course, the nabla uh, M X psi, to, uh, phi, sorry, to be nabla X Z psi restricted to M minus half, gamma M, And of course, one can check that the condition one, two, three are satisfied. So the Snabla M is a good, is, is a suitable connection. And the complex rank here is to the integer part of n over two as we need, and etc. And of course, the psi here is just I'm taking here the psi any spinner field on the positive part of sigma z of course you can take also sigma minus of that but then you have to uh, change a bit, change the clifford multiplication gamma m and put it my and and minus here and automatically uh, you will get also the suitable connection so in uh, for for n odd you only need to restrict the positive part or the positive spinners to M to get the good spin C structure on your hypersurface. And now <coughs> I can uh, announce my next proposition. I would like to relate both Dirac operator. So again, let M be isometrically immersed into that N plus one. Again, I'm going to consider the case N even. Assume that N plus one is a spin C. And of course, you know that if you have an isometric immersion uh, of M, you can define the mean curvature, which is one over N, the trace of the second fundamental form. And then we have, so I have the following, one and two. The one is that the Dirac operator on my hypersurface M applied to Psi is N over two, the mean curvature Phi, minus d for the multiplication with the normal vector d the Dirac operator on my m, on my m with manifold applied to psi then restricted to m of course minus the spinorial connection on my m with manifold in direction of mu psi restricted to m so all this quantity here is restricted to m and then nabla mu z psi is also restricted to m of course here uh, psi uh, is any spinner field on the ambient manifold and phi is its restriction h is the mean curvature of the immersion and dm denotes the dirac operator on my hypersurface and dz the uh, dirac operator on my ambient manifold now i'm going to talk later on a bit more about this formula but um, if you need now, just imagine that you are restricting a parallel spinner, let's say. So if you restrict a parallel spinner, so this quantity here is zero. And because nabla z psi is zero, so this quantity is as well zero. Then um, if the mean curvature is constant, then you can get an eigen spinner corresponding to the eigenvalue n over 2h. So n over 2h will be an, eigen, an eigenvalue and the restriction will be its um, uh, the corresponding or a an eigen spinner and of course here uh, i should say that uh, as i said if we assume that the mean curvature is constant that's why later on maybe tomorrow in my geometric application we are going to deal with surfaces and hypersurfaces of constant mean curvature but now this is just a remark i'm not assuming that in my ambient the spinner is uh, parallel. Great. And my next uh, identity is how we relate the curvature of both auxiliary line bundle uh, on, on my hypersurface and the ambient manifold. So we have the Clifford action um, on the ambient curvature of the line bundle psi when you restrict it to a um, the Clifford multiplication on my hypersurface of the uh, connection on the auxiliary line bundle on M. Maybe I should write it uh, in the second page. 
So for the second identity, I have Nabla, Gamma, the action, the amb of the ambient Clifford multiplication restricted to M, uh, the Clifford multiplication on the hypersurface of Omega M of Phi minus Gamma M nu Uh, the interior product with omega z and phi so uh, here omega m uh, is the curvature of the auxiliary line bundle on l m and omega z is the uh, curvature of the auxiliary line bundle l z and don't forget that l m is the just the restriction of l z to M, so it's again a complex line bundle. So that's how we relate the action of the Clifford multiplication uh, of the ambient Clifford multiplication of omega z on psi to um, the Clifford multiplication or uh, of omega m on, on my hypersurface m. Of course, here uh, phi is just a restriction of psi to my hypersurface. So first of all, let's see for the proof. I'm going first of all to prove the first identity relating both Dirac operator, the ambient Dirac operator, and the Dirac operator of, of on my hypersurface and to the proof. Mm, so f uh, take uh, phi to be as usual the restriction of psi to m, and let's try to calculate dm phi. So this is sigma j from 1 to n, gamma m, the definition of the Dirac operator, nabla e j m of phi. But of course, using the spin Seagal's formula, one can replace nabla m of phi by nabla z minus half the, uh, the action, uh, the, uh, the second fundamental form, Clifford multiplication of the second fundamental form of phi. So it's equal to sigma j from 1 to n. First of all, I can replace the Clifford multiplication on my hypersurface m by gamma ej gamma nu. And nabla m ej phi to be nabla z ej psi restricted to m minus half gamma m. Again, gamma m is gamma second fundamental form gamma nu of psi restricted to m. Using the spin Seagal's formula that established in the previous proposition, which is equal to so just write it minus sigma just the switch gamma ej gamma mu with gamma mu gamma ej to get gamma mu gamma ej nabla ej z of psi restricted to m j from 1 to n plus half sigma j from 1 to n gamma ej gamma the second fundamental form ej psi restricted to m now if you check the first sum uh, if if you isolate gamma mu it looks like the uh, this is the expression of the dirac operator on the ambient manifold However, one, you still have one missing term because you have the summation until n. So let's add the extra term, which is gamma mu nabla mu z of psi for the last factor for the unit normal vector to get. So I'm going to isolate gamma mu and then you will get uh, the ambient Dirac operator. But then you have to uh, subtract the extra term so gamma which is gamma mu nabla z mu psi restricted to m plus the second quantity which is um, that i'm going to write it at sigma k j from one to n i'm going to write the second fundamental form of ej to be ej ek gamma ej gamma ek of psi restricted to m and now this is equal to again minus gamma mu uh, the ambient Dirac operator 
of Cyrus 62 m but now gamma mu gamma mu uh, is just uh, minus one so uh, you are going to get minus nabla mu z of psi restricted to m and as for this last sum here uh, if k is different than j uh, since the second fundamental form is symmetric so this quantity is zero so what you still have in the summation you only have the case when k is equal to j so but when k is equal to j gamma ej gamma ek is minus one so you are going to get the trace um, the trace of the second fundamental form which is uh, which is h 1 over n over h um, 1 over uh, sorry which is n by h so plus n over 2 the mean curvature of the immersion by h so one more time uh, if you come back to the previous slide if j is not equal to k uh, not equal to k and this is the second fundamental form is symmetric and I know that gamma ej gamma ek is minus gamma ek gamma ej to this quantity will be zero and now for the case when j is equal to k uh, gamma ej gamma ej is minus one and the trace is uh, of this is you, you will get the trace of uh, the second fundamental form which is n by and uh, the mean curvature uh, nh that's why we get nh here now for the second part of the proof uh, I'm going to write explicitly what is the ambient uh, what is the ambient uh, curvature of the ambient auxiliary line bundle and this is by locally j less than k omega z ej ek ej wedge ek of course it's a two form that's how we write it locally uh, where jk goes from 1 to n and for the order or uh, at, uh, of the order n plus 1 I still have sigma j from 1 to n with the mu omega z ej mu ej wedge mu so that's how we write it how how we write omega z locally but now um, this quantity here is uh, omega m the curvature of the auxiliary line bundle on the hypersurface so i can write omega z as sigma jk from one to n so again omega z ej ek because i'm applying it to ej ek which are tangent to m this is omega m in fact ej ek ej wedge ek and you have minus uh, i can for the second summation here i can write it as uh, the interior product of mu uh, omega z so this is mu uh, interior product omega z wedge product with mu and this is how we write explicitly omega z now try to take the, uh, the Clifford multiplication of this quantity with psi and restrict it to m. So gamma, omega, gamma, the Clifford multiplication, sorry, omega z restricted to m. So this, all these quantities are on my hypersurface m and this is the definition of the of the curvature on the auxiliary line bundle on my hypersurface m. So this is gamma m omega m phi and let's come back one more time and as for this quantity here uh, this is if you take the Clifford multiplication then you get gamma of mu interior product with omega z gamma mu but this is the definition of gamma m so minus gamma m um, mu interior product omega z of phi so that's how we relate Again, okay, and that's what this is the desired result on how we relate both uh, curvature uh, on, on of the auxiliary line bundle on my ambient manifold and the auxiliary line bundle on my hypersurface app. So we are ready now to give uh, the first application. So application. 
So this result uh, has been proved by Friedrich. So Friedrich. has proved the following. If you have a, a surface um, immersed into R3, with mean curvature H, is equivalent to say that M is spin uh, having or carrying a spinner phi um, with constant norm and satisfying the following Dirac equation dm phi is h phi where of course dm is the uh, Dirac operator on my high on my surface m2 and that's what we call uh, the Dirac, this is called the Dirac equation. Of course, if I want to prove this result, uh, so I have an isometric immersion uh, of M2 in R3. We know that R3, uh, so the idea of the proof is the following, proof. So if you have, let's say the first, let's try to put the first direction, so we have M2, uh, immerse into R3, but we know that R3 is spin uh, with parallel spinner. So, um, uh, so just use what we established previously that dm phi is n over 2 h phi, but n is 2 here, so uh, here I have 1 minus gamma mu dz psi restricted to m minus nabla z mu psi restricted to m but um, if you restrict the parallel spinner psi so this quantity is zero here this quantity is zero here so automatically you will get the Dirac equation and of course because the spinner psi is parallel uh, already its norm is constant and so when you restrict it you are going to get also a spinner field of constant norm so as you can see for the first direction it's very simple uh, due to the relation between the both Dirac operator and now having a, a spin manifold spin surface plus a spinner field with constant norm and satisfying the Dirac operation it is easily, you can easily check that both um, uh, Gauss and Kodazi equation uh, for, for surfaces are satisfied and then automatically um, because the Gauss and the Kodazi equation in R, for surfaces in R3 are satisfied, you can immediately say that you have an isometric immersion of M2 into R3. Of course, I'm considering here my, my manifold to be simply connected. So and I'm not going to prove it, but just Gauss and Kodazi equation are satisfied. Hence, I have an immersion into R3. Um, of course, uh, so that's the idea uh, uh, of the proof. I'm not going to check the Gauss the Kodazi equation for immersion into R3, but I would like to come back to my uh, to the results. A similar result has been proved by Morel for uh, surfaces in S3 and a surface in the hyperbolic space of dimension 3 of course however here i i still have a spinner of uh, constant norm however i have a modified dirac equation so the dirac equation uh, is d phi h phi plus an extra term so where does it come this extra term because um, i know that r3 is spin with a parallel spinner, so I, I restricted the parallel spinner. But for uh, the sphere S3, 
It is a spin manifold with a killing spinner, and the hyperbolic space is a spin manifold with an imaginary killing spinner. So I'm not anymore restricting a parallel spinner, I'm restricting a killing, a real killing or imaginary killing spinner. That's why I have a modified Dirac equation. So this is uh, what Friedrich got. Uh, he got a spinorial characterization of surfaces into uh, the Euclidean space R3, and as I said, this was extended to S3, H3 uh, by Morel, and later on by many other authors to many other ambient uh, spaces. But uh, the importance of uh, the spinorial characterization uh, is the following. Um, so why uh, are we interested in getting uh, such spinorial characterization for the following reason? So a direct corollary So uh, is the following and the Lawson correspondence which say that simply connected uh, minimal surfaces of course they are simply connected minimal uh, simply connected minimal surfaces in S3 are in correspondence with simply connected constant mean curvature or let's write it simply connected one CMC so I will explain it that means the constant mean curvature one surfaces in R3 so uh, this is the Lawson correspondence and uh, as a direct application of the spinorial characterization established by Thomas Friedrich I can reprove the, uh, this Lawson correspondence in a spinorial and easy way. So if I have a minimal surface in S3, I can go to, or it is in correspondence with constant mean curvature, simply connected surface of constant mean curvature 1 into R3, of course, uh, or if you want minimal surface in R3, or in correspondence with constant mean curvature 1 surfaces into H3. And uh, we can have a spinorial proof of the Slosen correspondence. Just if you take, for example, a minimal surfaces in R3, so you use the Dirac equation, you modify a bit your spinner field to get a new spinner field satisfying a, the modified Dirac equation, and then you get a constant mean curvature surfaces into H3, let's say. So I'm not going to prove a spinorial is a Lawson correspondence, but um, this, this spinorial characterization that you are interested in gives you a direct uh, way to prove the Lawson correspondence just by playing the spinners go, uh, from going um, uh, uh, from Dirac equation to another Dirac equation or from a spinner field satisfying a specific Dirac equation to another spinner field uh, satisfying another Dirac or a modified Dirac equation. So I'm going to stop here for today and tomorrow I'm going to give more results in this direction what, uh, uh, and we will see a more geometric application of the use uh, of the spin seat geometry. So I would say here that all what I did in this first application was only for spin manifold because R3, H3 and the sphere are spin manifold but in, uh, tomorrow I'm going to talk or give uh, the spinorial characterization uh, of hypersurface of some spin C manifold which are not spin like the complex projective space CP2 uh, of complex dimension 2. So we will do it tomorrow.